for the editing room because uh, we were filming on, on on digital of course and we just put some scene on like i put together the two characters like insects and was just watching what will happen and there were glimpses of beauty like small glimpses when when there was some wonderful emotion in the eyes or one sentence and i knew okay now we have it and and basically the 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 rest of the story was improvised to fit to this strong emotion or to this strong turning point mm -hmm. so it was a very long filming and a very long uh, selection in the editing room so um Mathieu, we no Peter. Just right now, you're talking about uh, what I would call key scenes around which themes revolve. Uh, but as you were going for a break, Mathieu, uh, we were talking. I'm so sorry, about... I had a, I had an internet uh, breach, which never happens. So it it must be uh, a keep it nice and slow in several instruments. You know, like have it. You know, the duration of it. Take our time. So uh, uh, my question had to to do with. Um, uh having master master plan in terms of documentaries and and uh, how to how with experience peter learned that um, uh it's it's better to 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 have some decisions because i think a, a very important aspect is taking decisions and when to take them so when to take decisions for blocks of films for key scenes but i was mostly interested in uh, addressing the point of transition, because uh, what you said about cooking history is that sometimes transitions would would look good on paper, but not really on uh, when you edit. So uh, moving to fiction, where normally uh, you have a script which is called a master master plan, and um, and and uh, I would like to take two examples of films you work with, uh, The Adventures of a Mathematician, so also because I would like to greet Lena, the producer of the film, with, which is with, with us, and uh, Son of Soul. There are two very different films. Um, maybe you can say in a few words uh, wh what these films are about, but uh, Son of Soul is, is very specific because of... Um, of the way uh, the scenes are constructed and the transition. So I would like to, you to talk, since you have these two hats of a uh, scriptwriter and editor, and I know that you are very interested in, in transitions and how the uh, transitions between scenes and, uh, and also revolving uh, uh, with the key scenes, how, how you put the key scenes in a film. Um, so it's many questions in one, but maybe you can start with uh, talking about the transitions, uh, both in the case of Son of Soul and the adventures of a mathematician. It's a it's a difficult question because I think it, I'm not sure it fully uh, it's it's a fully fertile way to access the uh, the challenges of working on uh, these films. Uh, when it comes to Son of Soul. It was a, a script that was uh, very uh, precise, very written. There was very little leeway. So yes, maybe I should maybe I should say that, and this is a way of, of uh, addressing it. The way I, I worked with these films, Adventures of a Mathematician was a bit different because I, I came on board later in, in the process. But usually the, what I do is I work on films as a script editor or a consultant with the director or the writer directors beforehand so it's kind of a it's a it's a it's a long process the editorial process my editorial involvement with these films is not only during the editing period it's it's over uh, uh, many years sometimes and when it ca when it came to son of Saul specifically it was over uh, the entire writing time uh, because I read the very first treatment it was not even a draft and we worked as a as a, I worked as a script consultant on the drafts, and then worked uh, on the film during the set, and and during the editing time. So it really sp spawned over the, the 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 entire making of the film. Um, when it, so, but then so the, the 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 script was really precisely written, 
and the shots were designed uh, very uh, carefully. Um, it was uh, uh, Laszlo had a, a software that was a, I think it's called Shot Designer, where every shot was choreographed very precisely. They, they layered in the uh, actual setting, the location uh, plan, the bird's eye view of every uh, location. And they had this, this uh, Shot Designer program where every, you had little Pac-Man, you know, <laughs> esque little designs that showed every character, every uh, piece of setting. And you had a little thing with the camera, and he, he really everything was designed. So it was a, it was not the, the script was not only the master the master plan. Actually, the shot listing was very precise and very constructed and everything. And it appeared to be that there was no leeway, or nothing really to do in the editing, which would be like basically once the movie is shot, you just put it together very quickly. You do take selection, you put it together very quickly, and then that's that. Um, in fact, it was, so here's the thing. Uh, in the end, I'll just be very brief on this. Uh, I think in Son of Saw, there were uh, about uh, 70, well, there were 55 scenes. And in the end, 75 cuts. So it's a very, it's a very precise kind of machine. To make it, and I think we, in all, we just cut out one scene. From the entire film, from the script, so it was a, it was not at all it was not a, a kind of a editing process where you you uh, you test things, you move things around, or you it, it was really like a very meticulous uh, lacing of scenes that it had to land perfectly, and we had very little, almost no no safety nets. It had to work. Um, so, but so here's the thing with transition with transitions, that's where the editing problem started. Because we realized, maybe I can just give a little war story on this very quickly. Um, we realized that we had, a, we had a problem with the actual the visual approach and the grammar of the film when it came to transitions between uh, scenes. Uh, because the whole concept of Son of Saul was we were supposed to follow the main character around and track him wherever he goes and never let him go. But then, of course, it, it raises a major editorial question, is that if you are to follow the main character everywhere, how do you cut? Because why do you let the main character leave frame? Uh, you should technically just keep on following him everywhere. So there's no cutting points. So we had to come up with a whole uh, arsenal of solutions, like a whole grammar, a kit of, of editing, of cutting solutions that, that would allow us to cut from one shot to the next or one sequence to the next that's where i came in when i came into hungary to look over the shot list so they had the shot little shot designer backman kind of software where all the shots were precisely choreographed but then the shots would not end you would say well we just you know it's it ends We're like what do you mean it just ends we have to land on something in order to accommodate the cut to the next shot and so we, that's when the whole idea of coming up with a grammar that would make sense uh, came about. And I went in the cinema history, and I went through, you know, Rosetta, Darden's Rosetta, uh, went to see Repulsion, uh, Polanski's Repulsion, or uh, Lodge Kerrigan's Keen. Looked how those films were made. They're all films that are following one uh, character, and came up with different ways of cutting from one sequence to the next, one shot to the next. And that's when what we did for Son of Saw. We, for, in every case, we had a cut point that was designed, and we had to make it work. So it, it was really, uh, how should I say? We, we, and I was there on set doing on-set editing, receiving the footage as we were shooting in, my, in a little bungalow where I had a little laptop, and I made sure that every cut point uh, worked as planned as we were shooting along. And we did reshoot as we were, we did reshoot whole scenes or whole shots as we, as the, sh the, the shooting came along, precisely because sometimes it didn't work or we weren't satisfied and we had to reshoot. And could you, that, you yeah. tell us uh, how do you know and what makes a cut work or not to work? Are there a similar Elements have to be gathered, or it it uh, it's each time is different according to your experience. 
for for the grammar of Son of Saul, it, it was it, it just had to be coherent. So it was, for example, it, it could be as simple as we have to make sure that we land on the character's face, and then the next shot would be necessarily his point of view. It could be in a different place, in a different location. We just had to make sure that those two shots would cut. In some certain, we also wanted to make them as expressive as possible. It was it wasn't only to make it mechanically cuttable. It was also how to make it meaningful, and that's uh, that's when it started to become more fun, so to speak, for a movie like this. Is how to make the the, the give meaning between the cuts. I'll just give you one example: um, a, a, a cut where I was. Uh, somewhat proud of i don't know if that makes sense if i'm right but there is one scene in the, one uh, cut in the film it happens at night it's about two thirds in the film it's a horrendous scene at night where there's a bonfire people are being shot and thrown into the fire it's a terrible scene and and the main character is looking for a a, a, a rabbi among the uh, the jewish prisoners who are being executed um and he and um he, they, they, he finds one man whom he dresses as a member of the Sundar Commando. And then he, he pulls him out of the frame, and this is what I'm saying about why the frame or how the frame. He pulls him out of the frame, and one of the pieces of grammar we came up with is to, to hold on to the out-of-focus background very long, over the amount of time that would be traditionally, traditionally uh, given to a cut. And so that's that's that piece of grammar we came up with. So he pulls the man out of frame, and we stay on the out of focus background for a long time, and we hear the fire and the shots and the screams and the horror of that night out of focus, and we cut to a close up of that man he just saved with his with his his mask on and his and a close up of him, and it's completely still and completely quiet. And we realize, we realize then that he managed to save him, bring him back to the camp, and now he's part of the Sundar Commando, but he's a, he's a kind of an imposter of sorts. That cut, that the expressivity of that cut was something that we had to design as we went, and we were literally coming up with these uh, cuts in the van, coming back from the set, you know, designing as we went uh, from one day to the next how to make sure that these cuts would be strong. And that's a, for me, that was a, very, a good example of a very strong cut. It doesn't really, for, for Son of Saw, I don't think the idea of transitional scenes or how to make, um, how to make, um, how to redesign in the edit, these things, it doesn't really apply because it was really a, a very uh, engine that was extremely precise and we had to intervene up front and during the shoot to make sure that the lacing would work and that we would not be surprised mm -hmm. in the editing afterwards. Right. Which doesn't I, mean, which doesn't mean that there was no editing afterwards. There was a lot, plenty, but it was a different type. Yeah. So, so I think that uh, it's like uh, with different sciences, you have uh, some models, and uh, Son of Soul is almost like an extreme model. Model that, that doesn't apply to. It was like a prototype. It was very closed in a way. It had to yeah, click. That yeah. doesn't apply to most of the editing experiences that one have the most frequent one but it's 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 good as a sort of a reference as, as a model um but what i wanted to so there's two things which uh, uh from what you say which i want to ask one is that this presence of uh editing team uh during shooting is something um do you do you have a recommendation or not uh when it comes to this presence, and and if there are some editors in the in the in the room, virtual room, they can also give their say. And the second thing I wanted to talk, which is more like the things most frequent we come across in First Cut Lab, is the fact that um, uh, and doesn't apply to Son of Soul, I would say, is that very often filmmakers. Uh, there are three three main steps I, I identify when people get to know their characters. There's some kind of epiphanies. One I, I really see often in terms of fictions is uh, the script stage when people, after some months, realize who my main characters or my characters are. And and I also feel like in the editing, in the second time when there's a sort of a, 
uh, I thought my character was like this, but actually the, the film tells me it's like that. And I, I need to accept, especially as a director, that uh, everything of the filmmaking process, the actors, the set, uh, brings me, this character, to that. Do, do I want to embrace this journey or not? And, and that's where we situate ourselves very often at First Cut Lab. And the third, third step that uh, we will mention a bit less now is, uh, is when the audience appropriates the film and uh, when the film meets its audience and the audience uh, helps the filmmaker to, to actually understand what she or he did all the way. It happens also very often. Um, but this, this process, uh, of the rediscovering your character or w what your story is about, I think happens quite a lot in editing. Um, so maybe can you talk about about this and uh, and for the filmmakers here in the room, what to do? I mean, do, do you do you have to resist? Do you have to embrace the novelty uh, or to cope with that? Should I go first or should we, uh, Peter? Yeah, maybe you go first and then okay. Peter. Um, yes, I just want to answer what the first question you, you, you asked me about uh, how, the presence of the editing team on set or not. I would uh, recommend not to have uh, the editing team on set for uh, uh, traditionally covered films. When it comes to um, films that are long shots, um, the presence of the editing team on set makes sense uh, because the, the long shot process is something that is very specific, it's very delicate, and it, it makes sense to have some uh, the editor or a member of the editing team there. Um, uh, that's just to answer the question of the presence of the editing. Then you had the second question, Mathieu, was... Uh, Already about the character, or did you have the? No, no, it was about the characters and uh, how do you cope with uh, this sort of uh, discoveries during the editing process? And I think these discoveries are very connected to our main topic, slow editing. So probably as editors and filmmakers, you need to to digest what you discover. And uh, uh, so, what would be your advice for filmmakers? Uh, when when such realizations come into play, and and I would also like Peter to prepare himself for the question of what did he realize uh, about his character that maybe he didn't realize at the shooting itself about his last film. Uh, 